Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you all. As we turn towards our scripture lesson for this day, would you please pray with me? Holy God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Still any voice within us but your own. Give us ears to understand what it is you would say to us this day. And then give us hearts and hands that are ready to do your will in this world. And now may the words of our mouths and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So we are still continuing in our summer sermon series on the fruit of the Spirit. Our passage this morning, therefore, comes from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Now listen for God's word for us this day. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity. My friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Seven years ago now, when my favorite mentor arrived on the scene at my first church in Sumter, he brought with him his gregarious, loving nature and his no-nonsense attitude. As we all gathered for worship with our latest in a series of four, count them four, interims at that church, for worship on that first Sunday morning with him, we could already see that he had changed several things in the bulletin and that we would be doing responses during the prayers of the people. Oh. But then, when he got up to do the call for the offering, he did the absolutely unthinkable in a Presbyterian church. He began to sing. Be a happy giver. Having been trained as a liturgical clown, and yes, that's a real thing, and I'm told you all have had them here, too, and quoting 2 Corinthians 9, my mentor Jim gave the call to give by joyfully and boisterously, belly laughingly singing about giving into God's wondrous generosity. Crazy, right? Well, not really any crazier than the conundrum of a word puzzle we have this morning. As I mentioned earlier this week in my newsletter article, our word for today is agathosene, which our translation has rendered generosity. But that's honestly not precisely all that word means. Every other English translation out there will tell you that it means goodness, but that's not quite accurate either. You see, the problem is that this word is only ever found in the New Testament, and only four times there, all in Paul's letters. It's not ever used in the Greek language outside of it, suggesting that Paul may have sort of created it. That makes it a little difficult to translate. Its root word, agathos, means good and generous, in equal measure, and that word is said by both Jesus himself and used throughout the Greek world, so at least we do know that one. Let's look at the two sides of this word coin. On the first side, we have goodness. When we talk about something being good, we mean that it is excellent at fulfilling its purpose. So our pulpit is excellent at holding papers and books. The pews are excellent at keeping our congregation at least moderately comfortable while they sit and listen to me babble on for a bit. And this piano that I'm sitting at is excellent at carrying a tune. But humans, all animals really, but especially humans, are far more complex creatures. You see, we are created by God in God's own image, that triune communal image of what Augustine called the lover, the beloved, and the love that unites them. And God called humanity good. Fearfully and wonderfully made we were. 
fearfully and wonderfully made all of us are, chosen and specially made to love and be loved, our ultimate purpose. And yet Jesus himself said, no one is good except God's own self, because we all fail at our purpose. We all sin and fall short all of the time, breaking our relationships and dashing the ties that bind us against the rocks into a thousand different pieces. It really would be quite impressive if it wasn't so terrifying. Beloved Christian author Beth Moore suggests that at the heart of seeking out this particular fruit is a zeal for truth a willingness to fight our ignorance. In this case, not just the things that we did not know before, but also those things that we willingly ignore. To be seekers of the truth about ourselves, where our not-so-goodness, our ignorance, really lies. But in addition, we must be seekers of the truth in our common life together. For God did not call us to be good unto ourselves, or even simply call us unto ourselves. Everything God does is with a purpose and with the mindset of being called unto another. Agathosune is no exception. Let's take a look at the flip side now. An essential part of how we fulfill our purpose, where our goodness shows, is how it is shared with others. In other words, where our generosity lies. You know, someone heard me mention that word last weekend in preparation for today and said, but it isn't even stewardship season. Well, oh my goodness. Mainly because when I say generosity, everyone automatically assumes that I'm talking about money. Heaven forbid we talk about that. Jesus would never talk about that. Oh, wait. Jesus spent almost a third of his parables talking about that. Hmm. The main reason being is that where our treasure is, there our heart will be. An extremely loose translation we could use these days of that phrase would be, put your money where your mouth is, or is it all lip service, or does your giving reflect the faith and values you espouse? It's an interesting question to consider, one that is worth some serious reflection, but luckily for us, Money is only one dimension of generosity, so everyone take a deep breath. You see, the generosity that Paul is referring to with our fruit today is much bigger than a set of donations, as important as those are. He is looking at our way of living, at our hearts, at the ways the goodness of God's image within us shines out into the world. And if we want to see a broader description of what that looks like, we really do need to go and read Jesus' parables. Like those ones about lost items, those single lost items that are sought after and sought after until they are found, and then there is great rejoicing. Or the ones about those crazy masters who pay with equity, all of those who are working for them. Or that one about the rich man and Lazarus finding their afterlives a sheer reversal of how they lived in this life because of how they treated others. What about that one about the disgusting foreigner who is the only one who cared for a broken man on the side of the road? Or then there's that really crazy one about livestock who cared and didn't care for their neighbors and that being the way to get into heaven or hell. You know, it's almost as if a generous spirit, one that mirrors God's own willingness to give everything out of love for another, is the essential heart of faith. Could that be the true meaning of goodness? As a child, 
I always thought that goodness was about being a perfectly well-behaved little lady who could follow all the social norms and dress just the right way and speak just so and do precisely what all the grown-ups expected me to do. And I'm sure that for some of you that was true too. Maybe it was a little gentleman instead of a lady, but frankly, I railed against the translation using the word goodness for this particular fruit in the letter for today for that very reason, even now, because it has still never quite left me. But that is not what goodness is. No matter how much we may still feel the pressure to live into that model by some part of any of our upbringings. Goodness, agathosune, it is tied to our being made in the image of God's own self. We are not good of our own selves or unto our own selves, except by the help of Christ's spirit at work within us, helping us to love and be loved. And we continue to grow in that goodness by seeking the truth of where we fall short, where we ignore our sinfulness and our brokenness as individuals and as groups and communities and structures. And then we live into the generous spirit we are meant to have as a response to God's own remarkable generosity to us. A very happy generosity. When we use our time and our talents, and yes, even our treasure, to continue Christ's ministry in this place, in our lives, and in the world by giving everything that we have. You see, goodness and generosity, they really are the fruit of an active faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.